Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. This is KY4BDP. I'm Brian, and KY4CKP Chris is behind the camera today. We're going to introduce uh, a tripod and antenna system that I purchased from MFJ. This is going to be the Big Ears antenna. Uh, one of my favorite antennas. It's really great. It's very uh, uh, flexible because the actual uh, uh, antenna uh, rods that we use here are um, uh, extendable. So you can actually dial in the frequency that you're looking to do. So what we're going to do is do a quick little video or we're going <laughs> to do some uh, sped up video here of showing us put this up. It only takes about five minutes and then uh, we'll come back and the two of us will talk about this radio and then listen to uh, the FT-818 and the FT-891 once the antenna is up and we hope to have some good audio to bring back to you once the antenna is fully deployed. <laughs> So we're back now. You can see what the setup looks like. It's actually quite easy. I've probably set that particular antenna up a couple dozen times on different road trips and testing it out and so forth. What Chris and I also did once we had it set up is we took the coil off. Right now we're just set up for 20 meters and you don't need the coil uh, with the jumper for, uh, for 20 meters. You only need that for 40 and 30. In any event, we are also on a good station. We just wanted to give you an idea of what the sound uh, sounds like today. Obviously, propagation of the uh, band helps, <laughs> but we actually found a, a station that's fairly clear. We're hearing one side of the conversation. Let's uh, check in. Of course, now, Chris, it's gone down. So, uh, Chris, what did you think of the setup? Uh, the setup is very easy once again. Um, the engineering companies have done a great job with a lot of these antennas. They're quick and easy to set up. They're made to be transportable uh, because they know people are not going to work with them and not use them in the field if they're not. Right. So uh, I think all the examples we're going to be talking about have a great setup capability, just a few minutes. Doesn't take long at all. It doesn't. And, you know, when you think about the antenna series that we've started, we went from a, uh, you know, a twin lead ladder line type antenna to uh, maybe an antenna that's just a, uh, uh, vertical, uh, which was what the Wolf River uh, SB1000. Yeah, and then this is a V. You know the way you saw the uh, uh, extended uh, poles. Very easy to also orient one way or the other. We're in a park today. I've got a few trees, but uh, the, it's fairly easy to orient so you can get a better signal. But you got that inverted V dipole. Yeah, it works really well. Again, it breaks down to a pretty small package, not that heavy. And again, a big part of the focus that we want to cover with folks is. Not only enjoying your radio, actually use your radio, turn it on. Uh, I was listening to a, an old hand the other day, and he was talking about how he had gotten to where he would go several weeks at a time and not turn his radios on. Right. And he had thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of great equipment. In fact, it was brand new equipment because he had a lightning strike <laughs> that took out all of his old equipment, and he got all brand new equipment. His insurance company was great. <laughs> but he just wasn't using it as much, and so he sort of... I, you know, kind of made himself a New Year's resolution, mm -hmm. and he says, I'm going to turn on my equipment, and I'm going to make at least one contact on some frequency every day. And he's been doing a lot more of that, and he does YouTube videos, and he's a musician, and full-time, still has a full-time job and everything else. But he wanted to get back and enjoy his equipment. He had right. great equipment. And we want you to enjoy your equipment, and also get out and travel with it, and use it in parks, and get out of the house occasionally. 
having your shack with air conditioning is awesome. It's a little bit warm and humid out here today in Kentucky. But get out sometimes and enjoy it and, and go to a park for a little while and, and listen. Maybe make some contacts. And the choice of equipment, whether it's the radios, which are very portable today, power supplies. We've had our video on power supplies. We'll link to that. And then now antennas is the series for antennas. The equipment is out there and not necessarily for a lot of money. Well, that's the thing. The, the hobbies, as Chris and I see it, is not meant to be contesting all the time. Uh, there's nothing wrong with contesting. There's a lot of good folks that do contesting. But the other side of it is is just getting out. Get some sunshine. Get some vitamin D. Uh, get out there and do something else with your time. Uh, for us, we're also trying to help out our club. So, you know, uh, we, we want to show that uh, there's a lot more to ham radio as a club-based activity than just, again, sitting at home. And there's some great radios for sitting at home, but we're showcasing those that are portable. And we're out here with our uh, club's trailer today. And again, the lead up and part of the series that we're uh, working on and releasing right now, Field Day 2019, we're wanting to help hopefully get people excited about Field Day. If it's your first time, it's gonna be our first time. Right. Uh, attend your first Field Day event. Just go and see what's out there, see what people are doing, see what kind of equipment they set up with. QST had an article in this latest, latest uh, edition on Field Day, and they did a survey of who's gonna go to Field Day. And it's, it's a little underwhelming. And, uh, you know, Chris and I are new to the hobby, so we're excited about field day coming up. Uh, and I understand there's a lot of hams that have been out there for quite some time, so maybe field day is not as exciting for them. But even if that's you, you need to get out there anyway and, and encourage younger folks to come out and encourage new folks like us. I think we're now finally getting somebody on the station there, Chris. Uh, somebody's calling CQ, in fact. Florida. Mobile unit. And we're not trying to actually uh, acknowledge anybody today. We want to keep the video simple as far as showing the equipment and the ease of setup, even on a hot, muggy day. But I think one of our future uh, videos, and maybe even sort of a series off and on, we'll be out in the parks and we'll do some, some contacts, uh, probably some actual POTA activation, right. things like that. We'll have some of those videos as well. Today it's a little bit more about the equipment, some of these early series right now, again, leading up to Field Day 2019, just to help show people how relatively easy it is to get out there. Uh, again, get out of the shack occasionally. We all love our air conditioning, but uh, it's, sometimes it's nice to get out there and realize that there's a big, beautiful world out there, and you can still enjoy this hobby, and it can still be very transformative. Uh, let's switch over to your radio. So let's take, let's cut just for a moment. Let's hook it up to your radio, see what kind of uh, results we all get right. with the big ears antenna on the FT-891. And we're back. So now we have the antenna hooked up to the FT-891. Sometimes it's good to go back and forth between the gear because this is a QRP rig, the FT-818. The 891 has got 100 watts, so I mean, you can really reach out with folks uh, when propagation is a little less. Right now I do have it set up for 10 watts, but we're not really trying to make contact today. We right. really want to show you um, how some of these antennas sound between themselves and between some different hardware. Now, these two Yesus, fairly similar in some ways, but they do have some different electronics inside, some different capabilities. Although, generally speaking, the, the 20 meter band is pretty nice today. Right. We haven't really been needing a whole lot of any of the digital noise reduction or any other modes, the RF suppression or squelch or anything. So when you get lucky with those days, those are always nice and yeah. be sure and enjoy those. So we were just picking up a station there for a moment. Uh, they may have gone kind of quiet again. You know how it is with uh, we do have CQ. A little bit noisier right now. We had a very clear signal just a moment ago. And things will fade in and out. Like, right. you know how HF runs. The band was a little more open a little bit earlier this afternoon. It seems to have shut down just a, just a bit. See if we can find anything real fast. Got another contact there. It's a little bit quiet. We've had some really strong ones, mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to try to give you a little better examples, but we're getting pretty similar results, by and large, pretty similar results between the two radios. Even though the 891 has a little bit more of the fancy electronics inside, we haven't been needing it today. Whatever we've received has been pretty equal between the antennas we're, we're going through today. So that's been nice. 
Absolutely. You don't, you don't have to have the latest and greatest hardware. There's lots of good stuff out there. If you're a gearhead like a lot of us are, it's a great time to be a ham. But relatively modest equipment can do a great job. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. A couple of radios have now used the Big Ears antenna from MFJ. We want to go ahead and uh, wrap up this particular video.